I was a little whip Father captain of this big old ship Sail on out in a crazy fit Trying to find a treasure <laughs> Autumn said We swing on by Sing a couple of songs And then start to cry Where we still carry on Sailing along Until the favorite song Came around about dawn Heidi, Heidi, Heidi Ho We got six salty blood And watery soul sweaters. We could dance to warm ourselves up. Okay. And we even have our boots on. Let's dance. You can dance along with us too. This move is called the grapevine. It looks like this. Step behind, step together. Step behind, step together. Are you ready to try it? Step behind, step together. Step behind, step together. You're doing the grapevine. Now let's add some pizzazz. Ready, Maya? Ready. One, two, three. Step behind, step together. 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 Awesome dancing. <laughs> And now I feel all warmed up, but I'm hungry. Me too. This table looks almost ready for a feast, but there's no food on our plates. And there's no flowers in this vase. <gasps> it's owl! word is harvest. Let's go open the chest and see what's inside. Yeah! Are you ready to step aboard the ship of treasure? Yes! One, two, three! Treasure! A colorful, bountiful harvest. And there's some lavender, and some corn and some persimmons. Let's go discover where these came from by visiting some farms. And we can lend a helping hand. There are many kinds of farms. Farmers raise animals and grow crops. like vegetables, fruits, flowers, and grain. It's harvest time. Now everything is ripe for the picking. You can harvest flowers to enjoy their beautiful colors and floral scents. But did you know you can also harvest their seeds? This is one big seed head. So I found a California giant zinnia that's ready to harvest. See, it's turned brown. So I'm gonna cut it. And now let's take a closer look and find the seeds. Oh, look at all the seeds in here. Each of these could turn into its own California zinnia plant. So we'll keep these safe and plant them next year. So you see this yarrow is perfectly yellow. And then it starts fading. And it fades even more and then it starts turning brown. And once, once it turns brown, we know these seeds are ready to harvest. 
And there's lots of seeds in here and we could shake it on the ground and start more yarrow plants. This is an artichoke plant that's gone to seed. Isn't it beautiful? This is a sunflower plant that's gone to seed. Birds like to eat the sunflower seeds. Hi there, travelers. It's a good time to harvest your fruits and vegetables that you've been growing all summer. Today, I'm gonna learn how to can peaches. This is a beautiful peach tree. Now let's go see how to can peaches. Here's the peaches, and the first step is making sure they're all washed up. Okay, step two is taking your peaches that you just washed and we're going to blanch them. So we put them in this hot, boiling water. Important, safe cooking. You can only do this project with the help of an adult. So we're going to set the timer for four and a half minutes and blanch our peaches. Step three, after you've blanched your peaches, is to put your peaches in an ice bath to cool them off. Once we cool them off, then we can cut them in half and take off the skins. Step four is to cut your peach in half using a paring knife. And then you can see the pit inside. You take out your pit, and then we're going to cut it in half again and peel off the skin. We don't use that part. And now they're ready to soak in this solution, which has lemon and salt in it, so they don't change color, because we want them to stay beautiful. Next step is to take our cooked peaches. We're gonna put them in our canning jar, filling it all the way up. After we put them in the jar, you have to make sure there's no bubbles in there. So you take a knife and you go all around the edges, and then we wipe off the top just to make sure that we get a nice good seal and our food stays fresh. We'll take a lid that we've sanitized, put a lid on our jar, screw it on, and then we very carefully, because the water is getting hot, have to place our jar in the big canning pot. You can see all the peaches we're going to do today. And then we'll try some at the end. Last step, got to try your peaches. Look at how beautiful, nice peach, peach and yellow. We're going to try it out. Mmm, yummy. It'd be so good if you put peaches on some vanilla ice cream or some yogurt or just plain. And now, back to the farm with music teacher Brendan. Because it's music time with Brendan. Music time with friends. Music time with Brendan. Let the music begin. Chicken in the backyard. Chicken in the backyard.
animals are important on the farm. They are raised for meat, milk, eggs, and other products like wool. They can also help tend the land, raising fields and fertilizing the soil. This is Piggy Smalls. Hi! Hi, Piggy! Yeah! Piggy loves to run to his favorite pear tree and get a snack. Here. Let's visit Farmer Emily and her sheep. Hi, I'm Farmer Emily, and I wanted to introduce you to my sheep. This is Queen. This over here is Moira. This is Lipstick. And over there is Chai. These sheep are called Jacob sheep, and they grow wool in two different colors, black and white. This wool covers their whole bodies. They're super fuzzy. And once a year, they get shorn, which is like a quick haircut, just like people get. And once the wool is off their bodies, then people can use it to make clothes and other accessories. I used Moira's haircut from last year to make this sweater that I'm wearing right now. Smell that lipstick? Oh yeah. They're very nice and they love to get scritches because the wool can get a little itchy when it starts to get long. Right, everybody? Right, queen? Yeah. Now my sheep are eating their nighttime snack right before they get closed into the barn at night. This keeps them safe from predators and they have lots of food to eat overnight. Good night, sheep. Olivia's Ball of Yarn, a story by Caroline Mannertz. Once upon a time, there was a child named Olivia, who lived with her mother and grandmother on a small farm. There were many things that had to be done to keep the farm running smoothly. One morning, while her mother had some errands to run around town, Olivia was delighted to learn that she would be spending the day with her grandmother. Olivia's granny loved to knit, she knitted sweaters, hats, mittens, and socks. This story tells the yarn of a tale Olivia spun one summer afternoon. Now, Granny sits in her old rocking chair, knitting a pair of socks as she watches over Olivia, or Livy Lou, as she likes to call her. Granny looks down, expecting to see Olivia playing with her dolls, but instead, she discovers a trail of yarn winding its way in and out of table legs and around her own rocking chair. The trail of yarn leads out the door to the farmyard beyond. Now where could that Livy Lou be? Just a blink of an eye and a few stitches ago, she was here in the living room. Now all I see is a tangled mess of yarn leading out the door to the barn. Granny follows the trail of yarn outside. It leads straight into the chicken coop. Remembering that she still has eggs to collect, she grabs a wicker basket and peeks inside the door. She sees the yarn winding its way in and out of nesting boxes, under freshly laid eggs, in between two chickens nesting, and around the tail feathers of one very confused rooster. Granny gathers the eggs from the ruffled chickens, and then she follows the yarn to the next stall, where the baby chicks are kept. Two chicks have picked up the yarn with their beaks to play jump rope with a third chick, flapping its wings to jump and fly over the swinging rope. Granny snips off a bit of yarn so the little chicks can keep practicing and then continues on her way. The yarn winds its way into the horse stalls. One of the horses nudges Granny as she's bending down to untangle the yarn from his hooves, and she gives him a carrot from her apron pocket. Granny then continues to follow her darling Livy Lou's yarn trail. Next, Granny comes to the sheep stall. In order to unwind the yarn from their coats, Granny has to give all the sheep a big hug. The lambs knowingly nuzzle Granny's apron pockets where they find bits of apples. They let out baas of appreciation. 
She leads them all outside, tethered together with the yarn, before she frees them of the thread. Granny follows the yarn trail towards the ducks. She fishes the yarn from their pond. It's dripping wet and covered in marsh grasses, with little fish nibbling on the ends of it. The ducks start quacking up a commotion and gather around Granny's feet, so she feeds them some breadcrumbs from her apron pockets. They happily eat and waggle their little tail feathers. Next come the pigs. Grandmother opens up the pig pen to find one little piglet has the yarn wound about his tail. He's spinning around in circles trying to get it off. Eventually, Mama Pig is able to untangle him. Granny watches with amusement and thinks to herself, now what has gotten into that silly Livy Lou, teasing the piglets like that? She feeds the pigs their slop and fills their watering bowls before gathering up the yarn and following the trail to the vegetable patch. The yarn leads her to a row of cabbages. Oh well, she exclaims, the cabbages had to be harvested today anyway. As she collects the yarn, winding it back up into a ball, she also collects cabbages and puts them into a basket. Grandmother follows the trail to the orchard, where the yarn winds its way up and down several of the tallest apple trees. She pulls the yarn down from the trees and then pauses to rest. All of a sudden, she catches on the breeze the wonderful scent of pie baking in the oven. From here, the trail of yarn leads straight towards the farmhouse kitchen. Granny discovers Olivia's mother has returned home and her darling Livy Lou is about to enjoy a big spoonful of warm pie. Grandmother hugs and kisses Olivia. Then, she pulls out the eggs she's collected from the disgruntled chickens, a few cabbages from the field, and some small apples from her apron. Finally, she fishes out the wound up ball of yarn and puts it in front of Olivia. <laughs> Olivia laughs in response. Granny says, you little rascal, how I do love you. Would you like some pie, Grandma? says Olivia. Yes, please. I've had quite an adventurous full day of work following you around this farm all afternoon. It's time to prepare a feast with everything we have harvested. Then, let's set the table. We're gonna put down this. So, this knife goes here, and the blade will face the, this, the plate. And the spoon goes there. The fork goes there. And then you can leave the napkin here, the cup here, and the, and you can take the napkin off to run you ready to eat. And that's how you do it. joining us for this autumn adventure. We are so grateful to have our friends here to share in this harvest. Let's celebrate! Cheers! Cheers. The end! end. Support this show. Join us on Patreon.